Welcome back, listeners. I'm Robin Black, and this is It's All About Healing Podcast. Today, we have a special guest, Mr. Scott Plankert. He is going to share his story of how God is in control. He was diagnosed, given only six weeks to live, and then also now a cancer survivor. So I cannot wait until we all hear his story. Scott, how how, how are you today? I am excited to be here and talk to your, your, your podcast and all your listeners yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so just to tell you a little bit about me, I'm going to go ahead and dive in if that's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'm 67 years old. I've been healthy all my life. I uh, try to be a great Christian. I, you know, focused on the Lord most of my life. I was not in early years for sure and just not acting right and then praying moms and grandmas, which I'll tell a little more about that in a little bit, just brought me back into the fold. And, and so, Anyway, I, uh, uh, you know, never been to hospital, never took even prescription drugs all my life uh, at 66 years old at that point in the October of this is last year in 2023. And uh, I, my side started hurting and uh, I go to regular doctor and he says, well, you've got high liver enzymes. And then he said, uh, you know, you need to have right away, you need to have uh, uh, some scans. And so they did a ultrasound and then they, it showed not so good. Then they did a CT scan. It didn't show, you know, even worse. And then they maybe do a PET scan and it showed really bad. I sort of lit up. If you ever seen a PET scan, it, it, it's got colors to it, red and yellow, and that's what you're not supposed to have. And so mine sort of lit up like Christmas tree. And so I ended up, uh, uh, going to the oncologist, the guy here in, in Knoxville, Tennessee is where I'm from. Um, went, went to see him and he, uh, uh, wasn't so positive. He, you know, he talked about hospice and I didn't want to be like a dumb hillbilly, but I, was, I thought for a minute, I thought, oh, wait a minute, hospice, that's when you're dying, you know? And I thought, no, 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 no. I, I ain't dying, you know? And, uh, he said, well, he said, and he started telling about how bad it was. And there was a, a five inch mass in inside my liver, uh, which was more than half my liver. It was a three inch mass in my intricate gland right above my kidneys, uh, or left kidney. It was all around that other, that left kidney, hundreds of them. And so, uh, he said, uh, he said, now nah, go home and enjoy your family. And, uh, I said, what about eating and all that? Cause I was trying to, you know, at that point trying to eat better. And I was reaching out to, uh, uh, at that point, reaching out to my friends and because a few days passed between the initial doctor and the oncologist. And so I was asked people to pray. I was, uh, uh, you know, so so when that happened, I uh, I said, no, um, uh, I'm I'm going to live, you know. And he said, no, he said, you can go home and eat ice cream, do whatever you want. Enjoy your family. I've got three daughters. Uh, they're grown. They're 31 to 38. I've got uh, four grandsons that are like one to five. And I thought, no, 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 no. I want to see those grandsons uh, grow up and get married and have kids and go to college and, you know, and get in business, whatever they want to do. And I, I thought, man, I, I, I definitely, uh, no, no. And I just, my stubborn will, I think, you know, some people, they, uh, they think it's, uh, and I'm, I'm going to give you some points of ideas for healing that I think uh, work for me. And, and, and number, number one, um, you got to seek the Lord, you know, trust the, uh, the Proverbs three, four, five says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean on not the own understanding. Cause we will always divert back to our own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so I'm a, a type personality. I got a couple thousand people that work with me in business and in my businesses and things. And, and so I'm a leader, you know, and I call the shots and all that kind of thing. And, and so, you know, when something like this happened, I was thinking, okay, but, but I had to trust him. I had to trust him a minute, all the way, all the way, not just a little bit. I had to trust him. And, you know, uh, Hebrews 11, one says now faith is the subject of things hoped for the evidence of the things not seen. So I've always been one about faith and out in the future. I'm, all, I'm a futuristic kind of guy, you know, my business and my family and everybody always trying to think, what can we do to improve or get better, you know, with whatever it is. And so, so here I, here I sit with this, you know, really bad news. I mean, it was like not just a kick in the teeth, but it was a kick in the gut and the teeth. And, and that's a, 
what what were you diagnosed with? What was it? Okay, it was neuroendocrine small cell uh, carcinoma cancer. And it's, it's an odd type, a uh, very rare type, but it's really fast growing. It was I'm a numbers guy. And so when they were telling me how fast it was growing, the doctor said, and that's why I didn't give me any hope. He said, uh, the, the, the bad sales are doubling against you every day, 196%, or almost 100 mm-hmm. And so that's why he didn't give me any hope, you know. And so, you know, another another point, if you're sick or you, you've got anything wrong, get a second opinion. It, you know, I'm not beating up on the medical world, but they they've got the word practice in their in their word, practicing medicine. And mm-hmm. they're, they're, the Lord guides them, uh, some of them, and, and gives them wisdom and knowledge. And that's another reason to reach out to somebody else. Don't just sit there and think that everything's going to get better. You know, seek the wisdom and knowledge of your friends, your relatives, and and let them help help you with. And then and then search on the internet. There's a world of information, as you well know. There, so we did all that, and I I've got uh, six or seven nurses that they used to be nurses that now worked in my business. I work in finance, coaching people on money. Been doing that for forty years. I, I love it. You know, my kids are involved. I got two two of my daughters, one of my son in law, that helped me with the ed and, and running those those businesses. And so I, I uh, so that's, that's what I know. I know numbers and all that kind of, I might forget your name, Robin, in the middle of hope I don't. I remember the number. I remember if you tell me how old you are or something else about you number wise. But, yeah. but yeah, so I, um, uh, I was thinking, okay, a hundred percent net doubling against me. And then the next day is 200 and then 400 and then 800. And I thought, Oh my gosh. I don't got any time. I got to, from the medical world. I got to get after this. And mm-hmm. so I just told everybody that I, I delegated out a lot of things, hired some people, spent some money. And I, I went at it. Uh, you know, some of the things that, that uh, I did uh, was uh, created poster boards. I uh, had, just went on, went on Amazon, ordered about 50 poster boards and I put, Put scriptures on them. These are praise. This is praise scripture. You know, there's another okay. one. And so I put, I put, um, I put scriptures on them. I, 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 the main thing I probably could tell you in your listening audience is, you know, Christ, when he went to the cross, he said, through his stripes, we were healed. Mm-hmm. You're healed. You just don't know it. You got to praise the Lord. You got to not, you know, I, um, so many of my friends and my brother is, is an amazing Christian D and he, he told me, he said, look, you know, I had, I had his uh, granddaughter actually print those off for me and stick them on the poster boards. And she put like 50 healing scriptures on one side and put 50 praise on the other side. Mm-hmm. And, and so I mixed them up in my house before I, I left here and I went, I went to Invita, an amazing place. I'll tell you more about it, uh, a facility out in Scottsdale, Arizona, but, I put those 50 post boards up in my house all over all the rooms. And, and so I could be focused on it. And I turned off the news. I turned off anything else. that was a distraction, uh, Facebook, any of those things that, that uh, and I just focused on, on, on the Lord and focused on anything dealing with my healing. And so that's another idea. You need to fo- focus and not, not, uh, not get all sidetracked about anything else, I think. And I just inundated uh, myself with, with scriptures, you know, now you can turn on the Bible app and you can listen to scriptures. I was listening to them last night mm-hmm. for a couple of hours. And and then, uh, unfortunately, Robin, I'm old, so I had to get up and go to the bathroom. And so then I, I turned it off after two or three hours. And and so, but it's really, the word of God is the key. The Bible's alive. I'm telling you, the Bible is alive and miracles do exist because I'm one of them. I'll tell you a little more about this story. So I, 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 I seeked out more uh, doctors, you know, I got a second opinion because I didn't like the first one <laughs> and uh, it was no hope. And, and so uh, MD Anderson down amazing clinic down in Houston and world renowned for cancer. So I got them to check me out through a friend, my, my cousin knew some high ups there. And so she, well, she helped me to get my uh, scans there and they looked at it and he come back, spent 30 minutes on the phone, didn't know me from Adam, called me on his cell phone and, and uh, told me the similar thing that the guy here at UT in Knoxville said, and 
basically, he said, well, you might make, you might make it to Christmas. You know, he, he went up past Thanksgiving. This was just a few months ago. And so then um, I, you know, another kick in the teeth, but it verified what he was saying was right. And then I had a, another friend as a physical therapist down in, in uh, Tampa, Florida, and she had a, cl- a close friend that was head of oncology down there. And uh, he looked at my stuff and came back and said the same thing. He said, oh, if you if you do what they're telling you to do in Knoxville, which you probably need to, need to stay there because we can't do anything different for you, just stay there and do the treatments, do the, do the uh, um, oncology treatment, the, uh, um, uh, what do you call those treatments, the, uh, chemotherapy sorry uh chemotherapy do the chemotherapy treatments and that's what they know and that's what the fda approves and all that they said if you do that diligently you might you might have a five percent chance of living a year mm-hmm. now, now i said i'm a numbers guy remember so so robin i looked at it i said no 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 this this ain't this ain't acceptable and so I grew up in, a, in an awesome family where they're mentally tough and, and sometimes to a, a t- not good, you know, because they beat you up, I guess, too. But very mentally tough so that so when stuff hit us, we didn't always just accept it the way it was. I'd been hit in my life five or six times in business and failed two or three times. And and but I but I always got back up and, you know, and I was just taught to get back up, go at it. You're going to fail. You're going to things aren't going to be rosy. The devil's a roaring lion. He's out there trying to destroy you in every area of your life. And, and so you've got to be prayed up. You've got to you got to be mentally tough. Right. And so Scott, like so during this 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 time, what is it like? I know you said that you're. You're, you're reading the Bible and everything, but what is it as far as you and your family? How, how are you and your family coping with this at this time? Well, I, I didn't tell them right away, my, my, anybody, that they said that I needed to seek hospice because mm-hmm. I wanted them to have hope. Not that they wouldn't. I, I did share it was bad and the, the, the stuff about it, but I didn't tell them that. And so that was a week, a couple of weeks later before I told my girls and my, and my wife and because I wanted them to have have hope, and that, that was tough, you know, to hold that in. But uh, but anyway, I did, and then and then I started sharing it with them, and then I started sharing it with everybody, and and that's when uh, I cut loose, and and you know, then I got put on lots and lots of prayer lists all over the country of different friends and their churches and their friends and Bible studies and things, and so there were thousands of people that were were praying for me, and and. Uh, and I'm very humble, very humbled by that. Still, hum- still humbled by that. You know that that many people would care about me. You know because I'm just a messed up old guy from Tennessee. You know that, uh, you know that seek the Lord with all my heart and tried to tried to do right over the years. But but I'm still still a sinner, still messed up. But I I, I thought, wow, you know, if you do that with me, and that's probably one of the main messages. You you probably messed up like I am, whether you admit it or not. You know, and you sin, and you you know, but. But the Lord can fix it. He can turn any situation around. I'm telling you. I'm telling Absolutely. you. You know. Yeah. So, so some of the other things that I that I did, I put up those scriptures. I had to switch from, and I started with that with the uh, healing scriptures. And a lot of people, I think, probably in your 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 podcast, your listening group, they probably are still quoting a lot of the scriptures uh, like through his drops, we were healed. And says, you know, that are throughout, there's about 50 that are throughout the Bible that are healing scripture, well, about a hundred and something total, but 50 that I put on poster boards. And so, uh, but, but when, when he said through his drops, we were healed, then it, sometimes there's a scripture somewhere and I don't know the, exactly, but it, it says, why yet you were speaking, I answered. And so sometimes the Lord will answer before you even spit it out, I remember years ago when that happened to me first time, I thought, uh, wow, Lord, I ain't even told you what I want yet. And you're mm-hmm. already saying yes, or you're already saying no, or you're already, yes. are you already saying okay. And I thought, wow, you know, and I, I forget, you know, God's on the throne. He fell off the throne. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And, and I thought, you know, he, he knows everything about me from here to onward and for eternity. You know, and I thought, Oh my gosh, you know, so, so don't forget that and know that he's already here. Then, then what you got to do is praise him. You yeah. got to praise him. And that, so I took the hundred or so most uh, common names for Christ 
wrote those out on poster boards and, you know, uh, living water, grace, uh, you know, the uh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah, uh, you know, Salam, all, all the different scriptures that uh, all the different words that signify Christ. And so, um, yeah, I started focusing on that. So if you don't know what to do sometimes, just praise him through his names and, and read the hundred names, read the 25 names of God, the hundred names of Jesus. And, and, and let that, uh, you, you'll see, because you, it'll take the focus off of I, I mean, me, which I, I had on me at the time, take the focus off of you and it'll put the focus on him. And then putting, putting those praise scriptures. Another thing that I did that was, uh, I think was uh, a key, which, uh, it's being very, very simple, but I did another poster board that says, praise Jesus, I'm healed. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had two or three of those stuck up, you know, around the house. And then when I went out to Arizona, Scottsdale, I had them in the condo. And so, uh, and, and then another part of that, so, so it, if you got friends, you got relatives that are, you know, they call up, they mean well, and they'll say, oh, Scott, you know, so sorry, you know, that, that's what the original, my original uh, practicing doctor told me after he saw the, the CAT scan. Uh, he said, oh, Scott, I'm so sorry. All he could say, he was a young guy, he kept saying, I'm so sorry. And I said, well, what are you sorry about? And he says, well, you know, you it's not good. And I said, well, no, nah, don't look at it that way. I, you know, maybe God's got a different plan for me, you know, and and. Uh, and I said, so don't, don't, don't look at it. And he was amazed when I came back, you know, four and a half months later from Arizona and uh, my wife went to see him and uh, just a month ago. And, and uh, then she had to go back for a checkup and whatnot. She took pictures of me to show him, but okay, he is, he is alive. He is, uh, you know, cause, cause uh, a lot of people, a lot of your friends, all your relatives, if you get a bad uh, rap, you know, a, uh, stage four was what mine was. And like I said, it was doubling a hundred percent. So a lot of people are going to, you know, they mean well, but they, they, I even figured out that, that people sometimes they didn't want to hang out with me because they figured I was going to pass away, you know, and, and rightfully so, you know, I, you know, I, I know I did that years ago and here, you know, I'd, oh, I'll pray for the folks and maybe go visit them once, but I don't know. People don't want to hang out with people who ain't going to be around, probably. I don't know. And so and that's a tough, tough pill to swallow. And I didn't, didn't think about that because I knew in my mind that, that the Lord had showed me I was going to live. And so tell us a little bit about um, Invita. Like, when did you, how many other doctors did you have to go through before you arrived at Invita? Well, just those three, and then a couple of oncology nurses that, that I sent it to that, that I knew. One was a friend, and they sort of told me the same same thing. And so, uh, yeah, three doctors, a couple of nurses. So then, um, my daughters, uh, three of them, started researching. I had some other people in in the business. I work in Primerica, the name of the business, and and uh, some of the other top leaders that have done well. They could afford to go to Invita because it was it's a it's a little more more costly because it's uh, out of the box. It's it's Christ centered. It's uh, a holistic kind of place, but it's also they also do chemo. They they do it differently, and so anyway, they um, they had researched and I knew one lady, uh, uh, Sandy Yells Public, that had went there that had, years ago. Actually, the first patient uh, of, of the guy who runs it, and uh, so. She got on the phone with my daughters, and because some other people had heard that in my business that I'd gotten sick, and I, I was feeling really bad then. I was laying around in the bed 20, 20 hours uh, asleep, you know, sleeping about that long, up maybe four hours. Every time I'd get up, I'd be more way back down. And so uh, I didn't want to get on the phone with her, to be honest. And my daughters did, and she convinced them that it was the right place. But, but also, they had been researching a lot. And I sort of knew in the back of my mind it was right because I'd heard of other people getting healed of serious things with Lyme disease and cancer and that kind of thing. And and uh, but but you never know till you go up to a place and you experience it. You know you can hear other people. But but anyway, so uh, my middle daughter, being a mentally tough kid, you know, uh, she um, uh, made an appointment because she had to make one for three weeks out. She knew it was doubling really fast, and then she pushed the appointment to about ten days out. And then about four days later, she still ain't got me on board 
to go. And she just went ahead and booked our flight for me and my wife and uh, come over one day and she was packing her bags and, and she said, you're going. And so that was a God or moment there. There was so many, I could go through one after another, after another, that the Lord was guiding this, this ship and I'll let him guide. And, that, but it was one after another after another that the Lord, you know, was intervened. I, uh, I get out there. I'm out there for a week. They have uh, a, a way that you can go to Mexico. I was a little worried about that, but I went down there. They have another clinic down there. They took some blood out of me. Uh, they showed me in the bag well, it's red, and they said, when you come back, it's going to be white. And I knew of a scripture that I always used to quote a lot in uh, or not a scripture, but, but talking about the blood of Christ, you know, one drop of his blood is perfect. Mm-hmm. And and I, for some reason, I always said, would well, it make, make me white as snow? And then and then when, when I went back to get the blood put back in me, they whipped it into billions of good sales and, and got rid of the old ones and took that out. And, and then they uh, uh, put that back in me. And, and when they did, it was all white. And I thought, oh, wow, Lord, <laughs> that's why I've been saying that white is snow. And because because one drop of his blood, if it drops on you, it cleanses you and makes you whole and righteous. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm telling you, you know, so if you got something that, that, that the blood of Jesus, if it, it goes into your veins and just one drop of his. Ours ain't perfect, but his is. And when mm-hmm. one drop goes in, it cleanses and make it whole. So in Vita did did stuff like that, you know, and I was, they did stuff like, uh, they took a, a small needle and just common sense to me, but rather than shooting chemo all over your body, which they did that, but they did a small dosage, like 10%. They shot a needle in, into my tumors, a five inch tumor here to three inch tumor back here. And they shrunk, uh, they shrunk it from the inside. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, that makes sense. Why wear your body out and kill a lot of your body with chemo, feel like junk for, you know, and then three weeks later, do it again. Let's do a little dose every day. So they did that. And then they they shot more into the into the tumors and then it boy, it ate them up. You know, about about two and a half months later, I go back and have another CT scan and it shows that that tumor, Robin, went from five inches to two and a half. And what was the time frame of that? In two and a half months. So I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have any hope for those two and a half. I I was sitting there thinking, okay, the Lord's got me, but I hadn't had any good news medically. And when that happened, I was ready. I was ready to dance in the street naked or whatever. I was just so excited. (laughs) That's that's a crazy saying down here in Tennessee. Y'all don't do that anywhere else, but but (laughs) we shouldn't down here. But uh but no, I was just so excited about uh, about life at that point too. But back up just a minute, uh, just a week or so after I heard the bad news, I was at one of my business schools where we were teaching, and I uh, we had a lunch break. And one of my one of my guys, Donnie Lyons, uh, Donnie Glover, he he was praying with me, and he was saying, "Give Scott a long life." In the middle of the prayer, well, in the middle of the prayer, I. Was, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I'm asking the Lord, how long's a long life? Is it a hundred years? And uh, and I didn't hear anything. And then I said, ninety six for some reason. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, it's not you. You're going to live to be. It was on then. I, and I've got some other friends. They had a lot of Christian friends. So I went to the the wide open ones. Uh, you know, I went to the ones that were more charismatic. I went to the ones that were more, like profit driven and that kind of thing. I had four or five of them. And so I didn't tell some of them what was going on with me. And I said, Hey, would you, would you pray with me? And then they would disclose I was sick. They disclosed, you know, and, and give me different, say different. I don't have to take time to go into all that unless you want me to, but they, they showed me three or four of them showed me I was going to live. Mm-hmm. And even though the world said I wasn't going to live, all, you know, they, 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 they had a more direct connection to the Lord than probably I did, but they it told, but the Lord had showed me during that time too, with praying with my buddy. And, uh, and so I, I was 66 then, I'm 67 now. So 30 years would be 96. Well, my mom, my mom's 96. My grandma, her mom lived to be 106. So, I mean, I've got some longevity in that side of my, the other side of my dad, not so much. They mostly died in their sixties and seventies, but, um, but I had some longevity, so I, I thought, okay, awesome. I'm going to live 30 more years. So so I put on my poster boards a bunch of them. I put 96 
or yeah. actually one, one of my gals that, that works with me in a bit, and she flew out there to Arizona to see me when we, we were bad sick. Their family did, and she saw those poster boards, and she, without saying anything, she started writing 96, 96, 96. Because you need to visualize what 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 is it you want? How long do you want to live? I, you know, and you say, wait a minute, you can't you can't choose that. Well, I don't know. The Lord showed me, and and uh, I, I'll tell you another funny thing that, uh, I, well, not really funny. I went when I got out there, I wasn't able to get treated with 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 Indita because my my salt level was really low, and so I went in the hospital out there, stayed there five days. Another God ordained moment. My my young youngest daughter is a nurse back in Georgia. She just happened to fly out there. She didn't tell us she flies out there and shows up. So that's another God ordained moment. And we're the, we're we go to the hospital together. And so you know how you're in the hospital. You need somebody guiding for you and directing because sometimes they throw a lot at you. And if you're not medical, you don't really right. know. And you just go with whatever the heck they say. And so that was awesome for my youngest daughter to be there. And, and so during, during that time, I almost died again because the salt level dropped when it drops below 20. A lot of people pass away at 15 or do have strokes and all that kind of thing. And so mine got down to 19. So five days later, they had that fixed. I go back to Invita. I have another uh, chemo treatment, um, just one, the first one I'd had really. And then the next day, Thanksgiving, I go back in into the hospital because uh, I was losing a lot of blood. And so I had for like four or five different transfusions to put blood in me. Um, my daughter is still there. Praise the Lord. She stayed stayed out there. And uh, so almost didn't make it with that. My blood levels got way down low. And so uh, get out. Then they finally start looking at doing treatment. Well, I'm I'm antsy then. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, this thing's doubling against me every day. And so I'm after my doctor there at Invita, and I'm saying, come on, we got it. We got to do, you know, and he was trying to get my body back with the immunotherapy, just where it could handle chemo and handle because I was in I was in really bad shape. Then I was on TPN. I was on this bag of fluid and all this junk. And and I, I was on that for three and a half months to sort of a side note. And I finally. That, that the youngest daughter got me off of that eating. She'd beat up on me saying, you got to eat, you got to eat. And Cause before when I would try to eat, I'd either throw up, have diarrhea, I had something bad, you know, mm-hmm. and so I just didn't eat, you know, and, and just lived off that bag. Well, I lost a lot of weight. I lost uh, 70 pounds total. I weighed like 215. I got down to 145. And now I'm back, I'm back up about 170 now. I'm exercising. God is good. Oh my gosh. It was an area of my life that was, too, too, way too much, you know, uh, uh, I've been working on a book for some years and the Lord didn't open the door until this nonsense happened to me. He didn't open the door and I'll share more about that at the end here. But until this nonsense happened to me, he didn't, because I I, I I didn't fix it, the Lord did, but I fixed the areas of my life so that I could uh, feel it, get a green light to go ahead with it. But, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I thought you were gonna say something. Sorry. So, but yeah, <laughs> I wanted we you you answered so many of the questions. So it was like because I wanted to know what your journey was like during all of this. But you you had um said stated that you were sick and what was the pain like? What like what was uh, actually going through this like for you? Physically. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people with cancer, they have a real high pain level. And the Lord, I didn't end up having that. Uh, you know, I had like twos and stuff like that you know, on a scale of one to 10. It was a, one moment I had an eight for a couple of days. And that was that was tough, you know, but uh, but normally I, I didn't. And uh, I actually ended up taking CBD oil. I, you know, I'm not a marijuana guy or nothing like that. But mm-hmm. but I found out it wasn't addictive. And, you know, because they had me on oxycodone, they had me on Tylenol and all that to try to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to, to fix some of the other issues that I had, too. And let me sleep at night. So. Um, so, yeah, the pain w- w- was not tremendously bad, but. But uh, but it, it was I'd have one good day, uh, Robin. But I'd usually have three or four bad days, and I would say, Lord, why why is that? Why, why you know why the devil's out there like a roaring lion? And he just he sneaks in, and and I would encourage your your audience if when when he tries to sneak in, you gotta 
claim the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. You got to run him out of the house. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. He can't, he can't handle those two. And so I, I had done that. I, the good thing I had done that throughout my life, even when my kids were little, I, I, I call it cleaning house. My wife might, might be cleaning the house physically, but I would clean it spiritually. I'd go through my house and I would crack the doors and I'd run the devil out and I'd claim the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I'd crank up the praise music and I'd praise him and mm-hmm. quote some scriptures and then, and then I'd go about my day or night or whatever yeah. it was. And, 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 and when I do that, oh my goodness, because you have people walk into your house that, that, that are not of the Lord or, or, you know, they bring in all that nonsense with them. And so yeah. I, I, that that was another suggestion I would I would make is clean house and continue to clean house. Uh, I mean, he snuck in again lately. I, you know, I was actually in the hospital. I was thinking about canceling this today. I was in the hospital yesterday, Rob, and I my, my chest felt like somebody was sitting on it, and my jaw was hurting, and that's a sign of heart attack. And so, and I'm still a stubborn old knucklehead, and I waited a few hours and then went anyway. So went there, everything's fine, but. Uh, but anyway, uh, my enzymes are headed back up a little bit. And, and one thing I can tell you is, uh, uh, with, so I was healed, by the way. I had two PET scans. I was 98% clear with cancer uh, one February 15th, one March 1st, just, you know, two months ago. Totally, totally clear. I, I had the second one, Robin, because the doctors, even the ones out there, in Arizona didn't believe, but definitely the ones here in Tennessee and Houston, I didn't believe, you know, and, and I had to get some more enemy therapies here. Uh, they wanted me to continue to do that and have an oncologist do that here in Tennessee. And so I went back to the same group and they, they said, Oh no, 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 you had the wrong uh, CAT scan done. We got to do it with this fluid going into versus this one. And so I paid $2,500 myself to have a second one to prove to them knuckleheads that I was healed and, and I was, and, but, but it's the numbers are going up a little bit, but I got to, I just can't, you can't just run on your own accord. Cause I, I, I was so, um, so excited that, and I think a lot of Christians do this. You get so excited and then all of a sudden you got Christ in the, not in the back seat. you know, we're supposed to let him be up here dry, riding with me, our co-pilot. But that, that's a mistake, by the way, he needs to be the pilot, not the co-pilot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But most people, Robin, they've got Christ in the trunk. He's a little spare tire. And what happens is most most people, they they uh, when they get in trouble, they say, oh, Lord, help me out of this mess. Yeah. And they go, they go take the keys and open up the trunk, and they get the little spare tire out. They put it on the car. They go down the road for a few hours, a, few, a day or two, and then they get the tire fixed. And that's what happens with most people, and that did with me too. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would, you know. For years, I'd get in trouble. I'd say, Lord, help me out of this mess. And then he would. I'd praise him, and I'd work, you know, for a few hours or a day or two. And then I would put him back in the trunk, and I'd close him down in there. I'd bolt him back in. And see, that ain't, that ain't right. That ain't the way to treat Christ. Yeah. <laughs> he's not He's he's not a spare tire, you know. And so, so that, you know, uh, so I, I'll be honest. I got a little prideful and a little excited and, you know, and, and my numbers are turning a little bit, you know, but, but praise God, I'm healed. I'm living 30 years. I got probably to say I am. The Lord show me I am. So I got to go through a little more stuff. Maybe, I don't know, you know, maybe the Lord will intervene and it'll just, it'll just, uh, those numbers are turned around. It, it did part of the time. It was just a God ordained thing. The doc, the doctors right. out there in Arizona, uh, one of them, it, not, not as wide open, a, a great guy. Okay. But uh, in the middle of, of looking at the numbers, he was like watching the blood markers and, and the cancer trending down. And, and uh, in the middle of one of the meetings, he raised his arms. He said, praise Jesus, you're a miracle. Mm-hmm. And that was about January 15, about three months into it. And when that happened, I thought, oh, my gosh. My main doctor is saying that. And then and then I went to the surgical guy that did the, the little needle biopsies inside the tumors. And and he said the same thing. Uh, uh, once he saw how the tumors had shrunk from five inches down to two and a half to, you know, to, to nothing. And uh, he said, he, 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 he said, uh, you're a miracle, you know, because I was quizzing him about going back in to shoot the little bitty tumors. And I said, do you really need to do that? And. 
And uh, he said, yeah, it'd be good to do that and whatnot. And, and I was quizzing him about, you know, the risk of that, you know, because it's any surgery, anything like that's, you know, serious. And I said, well, let's don't do it if we don't got to do it. And he, he said, look, look, buddy, you're, you're a miracle. He said, I can do about anything I want to you. God's got you. And just relax, you know. And, and anyway, so he was, you know, you got to get tough with me, Robin, if you want to get my attention. And he did. And so, uh, so I, I'm just telling you that, that uh, God is in, in the healing business. And, and Absolutely. I just, I just think that uh, if, if you seek him with all your heart and lean on not your own understanding that, and, and, and learn lots of scriptures. My, my uncle, I'll tell you a funny story. My uncle, when I was just a little mere kid, I've always been pretty money motivated. He would pay me a nickel. This is how old I am. Old I am. He'd pay me a nickel for every scripture that I'd learn between the time he'd see us and see us the next time. Well, I could quote five or six of them by the time he got back, so I'd get a quarter or whatever it was. And every time, he, you know, so I learned 40 or 50 scriptures when I was a little guy, six, seven, eight years old, that was the key. That was the key because when, when I could, didn't even like turn on my phone, I almost went blind during this process. I can tell you about that if you want me to. And 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 when I couldn't turn my phone on and to listen to the word of God, but I had the word of God in me enough, you know, by quoting those scriptures, and that 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 helped me. That helped me. So I would encourage you. You're, you're listening. All you don't know when something's going to hit you. And you don't, you don't want to live in fear and you don't want to worry about any, anything bad happening to you, but, but stuff happens. And, 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 and uh, I guess I was more ready all my life. You know, I had a positive dad and he had positive quotes and some people live just by that. And some people live by mental toughness and some people live just by the word of God and, 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 and the Christ. I think it's a combination of all that. I think it's a combination of, uh, you know, having some positive quotes and people around you and speaking life. Yeah. yeah. I think it's uh, being mentally tough and, and, and fighting through whatever you're, you're going through. I, I think uh, it, it's definitely seeking the Lord with all your heart and going that, that way. I think it's also using wisdom about uh, what the Lord has placed in doctors. I mean, like, like in Vita, amazing place. I mean, I, I, I mean, Absolutely. you know, so, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, seeking out wise counsel because not everybody's practicing medicine. Some of them got it figured out in there. Mm-hmm. there people, I think, got it figured out, you know. Right. Uh, are, they, are they perfect? No. You know, they, I took a couple of new therapy things and lost 30 pounds in three weeks. And, and I realized mm-hmm. those things wasn't good for me. And because I started researching and I had my nurse friends researching and they said the number one cause of this this thing was the semi-therapy was weight loss, and number two was diarrhea, and number three was uh, muscle mass. I lost a lot of muscle during all that. Yeah. But, um, but I will tell you, I will tell you this: I'm I'm uh, I, I spent my whole life uh, uh, try, trying to I spent, I spent my whole life uh, uh, searching, you know, to 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 try to improve my life, my kids' lives, you know, and, and trying to put, put Christ first and, 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 and not just, uh, uh, you know, and not just, it'd be, it'd be the priest of my home, you know, leading my family spiritually, probably number two. And, but I found, I found that the world's sort of upside down and, and, and it's all nowadays it's about, I, I me, me, everybody's all about, you know, what, what, what's in it for me, you know, and, and and I did a, I did a survey with oh, 100, 150 people, different different groups, different people, and I, I put the ten parts of your life in front of, front of them, and uh, you know because a lot of people say put God first, put family second, but Ben is third, and that's so true, very true. But yeah, I found that there was more to that. It was more. It was uh, the God part of it was was. You know, number one, your relationship with Christ, even if you're a minister, even if you're a pastor, you, you, your focus has got to be him first, not your congregation, not your audience. And then number two was leading your family spiritually. And, and then number three, it, it, I found out through 
researching and praying. The Lord said, okay, my, my wife's next. I got to, you know, a lot, a lot of moms will put their kids because they're innocent and they won't put their spouse or their husband or, or whatever. And, and that's, that's not right. We, we've got to live by the Bible. If you believe some of the Bible, you got to believe all the Bible. It's inspired by him and, 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 and live by it. So anyway, I, um, go a little bit further, you know, witnessing next and f- fitness exercise next. And so I've got 10 chapters in a, in a book that I'm working on. And and uh, there's areas that, that I wasn't right. And it was exercise and nutrition and and really focused on the Lord as number one. So this this thing, this bad thing that hit me, it brought me to my, my, my knees, but it brought me to my knees so that I could learn to fix some of these areas right. of life. I right. Mean, and I like that because I like, you know, sometimes through our suffering, he gives us the ability to reign over others and to reign over others with our stories. And your story is absolutely phenomenal because you are, you're a walking miracle. You know, it's, it's, it's like for anyone who doesn't believe, it's like, just look at you, you know, and that's what I absolutely love. And what is the name of the book that you're, that you're going, that you're writing right now? Uh, it's called Balanced Living in an Unbalanced World. Balanced Living okay. in an Unbalanced World. Because what I found was, I, I mean, me, it's in a, each of us, you know, with social media and all those things, Facebook, you know, taking selfies and all that. And I'm not beating up on everybody that does that, but I'm saying it, it, sometimes it's about all about them, you know, and, and I found out that the average person realized that that if you ask them what's the right way, what's the real balanced way that you ought to live your life, they know it's Christ. They know that's number one. They know they're you know being the priest of their home and leading their family spiritually, and you know, and their their spouse, their kids, and nutrition and all that. But they tend to put the social side of themselves and I maybe first, and then and then a lot of people like me, I put my work next, you know, and I was just all about work and I. And I build a great business and I've got a couple thousand people, like I said, that work in my business. I got six businesses and they're all tied together. Very similar, all, all similar businesses. But I mean, and I've been blessed. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I, mean, I you know, I've been blessed financially. I saved my money. Uh, you know, by doing that, I was able to spend the money I needed out there in Evita to, you know, because Medicare didn't ca- carry, a, ca- carry a lot of the cost of that. And. So I would encourage your, your listening audience to do what you know is right, save money, live right, you know, be honest, right. I mean, do the right thing. And, 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 you know, just keep trying to get better, you know, because someday you're going to be hit. You're going to be hitting the mouth. You may hit the teeth. You may be hitting the gut at the same time like I was. And then you're, you're ready. You're ready for something big, I think, you know, and, but but uh, I, I want to share I want to share my story. I, I I told you right before we got on this that I I had uh, I'm a, I'm a promoter at heart. I stir up and I love to promote and things and whatnot. And uh, I started a little ministry 30 years ago this year down in South Georgia in boats pull up an anchor around an island. It was a crazy idea I had. I was out riding my jet ski one day. I'd made some money. I had a little bit of time. And I and the Lord spoke to me to do a, a a ministry off this island to do church services because there was a lot of people that came to the lake like any lake and they visit their friends and then they don't go to church or maybe the people don't go to church either. And I thought, well, this would be a cool way to, you know, I can fund the money for it and we can get different speakers and singers. I'm not far from Nashville and we can get quite a few anointed great singers. So anyway, I started, me and Betsy, my wife started that. And then my girls jumped in and helped as they got older and uh, so 30 years we've did that. And we have about 250 people coming on a regular basis that anchor out. And so the Lord had given me faith to believe because my wife had started with praying because we don't have a covering. And if we have rain, we can't have service. So she would pray out the rain, you know, and for three years running, we don't have a rain once. And I thought, okay. wow, mm-hmm. I thought, wow, this, this gal I married has got faith. Holy smoke. Yeah. I said, Lord, I don't, have, I don't, I don't have that. And there's so many awesome females, women that have awesome faith, and maybe their husband just hadn't come in yet. You keep praying, you keep believing, you keep encouraging, you know, those guys, and watch what happens. And is, so that's what my wife did. That's what my mom, my grandma has done to pull me back into the fold. But anyway, we started this in the first year. It was like 
uh, 30, 40 people, you know, in the summer come. It was June through August. It's called Two Tree Island. If you go on Facebook, it'll, you can find it there, Two Tree Island, and then and Two Tree Island dot com and dot org too, if you want to. T W O T R E. So anyway, this is our 30th year. So, and I'd already planned last year, last summer. I said I'm going to have a big celebration. I'm going to honor all the people that spoke and sang over the years and did, you know, that have, have won people to Christ and, you know, and encouraged, uh, planted seeds for a lot of people. I said, I want to bring them and have a banquet and we're going to feed them. We're going to give them, a, you know, and I, I've got a little plaque in there. I could get it. But it, what, what it says is when in the mansions above the saved all around me appeared. And some people said it was Robin who invited me here. See, mm-hmm. by, by using your gifts and talents to, to start your podcast. And now it's grown to be worldwide and all over the world. And, I mean, what a blessing. See, you won't know, Robin. You won't know, and several of your listeners that, uh, uh, that are wide open for Christ. Maybe they're just a prayer warrior. A little grandma is a prayer warrior. Mm-hmm. She won't know till she gets heaven, how big it is and what the impact that she did, you know. So when in the mansions above, the saved all around me appeared, and some people said it was Robin who invited me here or Scott who invited me here. And so I'm going to give that out, you know, here in, in, in June here. We're doing that a month from now. And I'm excited about that. But here, here's the point. I was thinking about that a year ago. And so when I was laying there in bed, you know, not able to do much of anything, just living on that bag. I was thinking, I got to live. I got to, I haven't done that banquet yet. I got to do that. So, so list out the things in your life that encourage you. My, my four little grandsons, I had two that are one year old, one is three and one is five. Oh my goodness. I had, had a, a video TV, little uh, photo thing that I had flo- put, put up pictures and things and, and I see my family and see my friends and I let that scroll and I had scriptures in it. And you, know, you can get them now where people can add to it uh, remotely. And my daughters would do that from Tennessee and they'd add pictures. And that gave me hope that encouraged right. me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My little, yeah. yeah my little uh, two year old grandson, about two and a half. He, he asked his mom, could he pray one day at, at the food? And he said, he said, uh, they called me Papa, and he, he said, uh, uh, "Lord, heal Papa." And yeah. BB is what they call my wife. Is BB help Papa? And and anyway, just you know, I, I wrote that out and put that up in front of me because when the deepest, darkest times, when I needed hope, I think, "Oh my gosh, you know, he's praying for me too." And so I just, I just think. Uh, let the world know. And then, then when it turns out like it has for me and, and you're healed and you're a miracle, then, then you can go back and it'll, it'll, it'll help a lot of people with their faith and the ones that have marginal faith, it'll help them have stronger faith. And so he, let me finish with this. I know I've went on a long time, but um, when I was out there, I was saying to the Lord, I said, you know, you gave me the faith because I joined my wife and we would start praying and, and uh, the rain away on that island. And now we've had 300 and I don't know, 80 services. And of those 380, we've only had five that rained. So the Lord, the Lord has done a magical thing out there, a miracle out there too. And we even had the services because we didn't, we didn't whip out just because it sprinkled a little bit or something. We ended, mm-hmm. but had, had them those five times. So we have batting a thousand, but, you know, I, I was saying to the Lord, I said, Lord, you've given me the faith to be able to believe something big like that. I said, what about the other areas of my life, you know? And I think some people, they have faith in one area, but but the Lord wants to give you faith in all areas. I'm telling right. you. And, and so when, one of my deep, tough times, I was up all night. I was, you know, worried about it. And I was, but I started praising the Lord. And I said, look, Lord, give me Give me the faith of a mustard seed. Faith, faith of a mustard seed, just a little tiny thing. I said, let me have that, Lord. And uh, so nothing happened then. But about three nights later, he woke me up in the middle of the night. And he says, you got it. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, my gosh, Lord. <laughs> and so so I started praising him. And and doing those kind of things worked me out of that nonsense and run the cancer off and kept the devil at bay. And so anyway, then, then a night or two later, I said, I was thinking physically, I thought, Lord, I'm going to plant your mustard seed. I want it to grow. I'm going to spread your gospel. And so I, 
I was thinking about physically where I live and I can stare at them smoky mountains. I, I can take you outside and show you a beautiful view. I got 20 acres here and I just, I just in the heaven area here right now. And so I, I, I saw myself poking my finger physically when I was in Arizona back here in my ground and planting that seed. So I did. And and then uh, a few hours later, the Lord said, look, I, you planted it. I'm going to water it. Yeah. So but by stuff like this, what happened right here today? And you opening this up, you didn't know me from Adam and neither did the person that led you to the, and the person that led, the, it's about three down for that, that shared my story, a little five minute story. And this one's long today, but, but, but from that, you give me a platform, you know, and I'm, I'm, the, and so later I'll have this book out and, 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 and I'm, I'm not going to take the proceeds of it. I'm going to give it, give it to ministries and charities and things. And, but I, I think that the balanced living in an unbalanced world that we got to take our focus off of us. We got to put it on Christ. And I don't want to get anybody in a legalism or legalistic thing. Cause I was that way for a while and I, I'd try to do it for five minutes a day and focus on the Lord. And then I'd go to 10 and I go, but, but, Perfect vision, you know, is is twenty twenty, and so mm-hmm. I found that if I would spend twenty minutes with a devotion with the Lord, twenty minutes with my spouse, twenty minutes with each of the areas, twenty minutes exercise and making sure I eat right, and so now I think I I finally got a green light to go on and do that. I've been thinking about that book for thirty years. I got a green light. I'm going, and and so I'm excited about it, and uh, you know, so who knows? I, I think it might help some people because I'm going to have this cancer story intertwined in it a little bit, but it's also going to be about, uh, about, about winning in life, you know, cause I've, I've been blessed and we, I've got an awesome family. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Got- and I like what you say. I had to write that down because you said perfect vision is 2020. So to spend 20 minutes with him, 20 minutes, like I really, I like that. Cause I'm just like that really resonated with me where I'm going to have to, kind of probably put a word together myself on that because I really like that. But, and I, I just, I thank you so much for sharing your story because I really do believe that it is going to reach thousands of people and they're definitely going to know that they have hope now and you've given that hope to a lot of people. So I really do thank you for that. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited about what the next 30 years is going to be like for me. And, and for you, you're, you're doing a good work, a great work. And, uh, you know, I will say this. I, uh, my, my email address is my name is Scott Pinkard. And I don't mind sharing that. And I'll, I'll try to help anybody I can with whatever I can. And, uh, but anyway, my, my my spelling of my name is P-I-N-C-K-A-R-D. So Scott Pinkard at Gmail. So don't hesitate to let me try to help in some way, you know, if if uh, if you think I can. So, but, uh, but God is good. And uh, I've enjoyed this today and uh, and uh, hopefully it helped, helped quite a few people. So uh, thank you. God bless you. No problem. And thank you again, everyone. This is Robin Black and Scott Pinkert. And everyone, this is all about healing. You stay blessed.